Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Pragmatic with MarketChameleon.com. I wanted to demonstrate to you how you could use the At The Money option straddle screener to find potential undervalued or overvalued opportunities. The option straddle itself is a non-directional trade. You're buying the call and you're buying the put simultaneously at the same strike, the At The Money strike. And what you're looking for is the magnitude of the move. Uh, for the hold period. So I'm going to show you real quick what a graph looks like from the buy side and the, at the money straddle. You see here, if you're buying the call and the put, you need the stock to move by enough to cover the cost of that straddle at expiration before you start making, before you break even and you start making money in either direction. So that's what it looks like from the buy side. From the sell side, it'll be flipped the other way. So, so right now I'm going to come back to the straddle screener and before we do a scan, I'm just going to go over what the data points are in this summary table are. So this is the symbol, stock price. This is the price change today, market cap. This is the market price of if you bought this, this straddle in Microsoft. So this is the expiration and this is the stock price. This is the strike price. And if you bought the call and the put simultaneously, that's the cost of that straddle, the market price. And the question, and really this over here, is the percentage move that you need Microsoft to move by before you break even and needs to obviously move more than that if you're approaching from the buy side before you start making a profit and that's what we're going to be testing now so theoretically you know what we want to know is on average if you're going to hold Microsoft for let's say the next 20 days in a 20 day hold period what's the average move in microsoft in either direction up or down so if it's five percent six percent seven percent then this straddle is undervalued uh to the mean right so you're getting a discount to the to the historical mean if it's below that then the straddle is overpriced to the historical mean and over here the next column here is the theoretical value and that's taking the historical mean and converting it to a price um, so you could compare the, the market price to a theoretical value um, the next question is well how often does does uh, Microsoft in a let's say 20 day holding period whatever it is to this expiration how often does it move more beyond that 4.4 percent you know is it 10 percent 20 percent 30 percent because you want to see the frequency of those moves and that's what this uh win rate is this is saying over here that 62 and a half percent of the time in our historical observation if you held held the stock for the same hold period to this expiration it's moved beyond this 4.4 percent um in either direction so over here, after I do a scan, we'll go look at, at one of these studies so you get it in greater detail. And the last thing here, this column just shows any type of events that we're picking up that could be a potential catalyst for a stock move uh, that's that will cover that will be covered within this expiration date. Now, I'm on, I'm going to do the scan this time from the buy side. So we're going to look for because we're buying, we're looking for potentially undervalued option straddles i'm going to change the the his the the years in our analysis to six years for six years of historical data we're also looking for a positive theoretical edge meaning we want to buy buy the straddle below the historical theoretical value or mean so i'm going to put 10 percent what this is saying is that we want to buy at least um the, the straddle at a 10% discount to the historical mean. Um, over here, then we'll, let's look for a theoretical win rate. And we want to know that, that at least 50% of them has said it. That means that at least half of our historical observations, the price, the, the stock moved, um, enough per, in percentage wise in either direction to cover the cost of the current straddle or what the, what the current implied percentage move is um, so let's let's just take a look at what we have here and i'm just going to pick one out let's just let's do bhp and here we see that the market price right now is two dollars sixty cents we think theoretically uh it's worth three dollars fifty three cents uh the that's giving us a theoretical positive edge of 35.7 because we're buying it at discount to that mean and historically this straddle uh moved 
historical win rate is 54.4%, which means the frequency of the straddle moving more than 4.5% for the given time period has been 54.4%. And let's just look at the study here. This is the data. And here we see BHP, we're long the at the money straddle, the 57.5 strike, uh, July 19th, it's cost $2.60. The stock right now is 57.34, a little bit below that strike. And there's 18 trading days to expiration. So these are all the variables that are given to us. We also know that at expiration, 18 trading days, the stock needs to fall below $54.90 or a negative 4.3% or lower uh, for us to break even or start making money to the downside. And to the upside, the stock has to go to $60.10 or higher or 4.8% or higher for us to uh, go above our break even. The stock's right now 57.34, a little bit below the strike price. Now let's do, so one, what we don't know right now is, well, how frequently does that happen, those types of moves? And on average, how much does it move in an 18-day trading hold period? And since we don't know that, what we can do is then look historically well you know what does our historical data say and and then we'll we'll go through that analysis now so this is the study we're doing to create a theoretical value we're going to use six years of data for an 18 day hold period in the stock we're going to exclude um earnings periods because this 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 stock is not going to not expected to release earnings within this expiration and we have a total of 68 total observations. Now let's look at the data below. So how how many times did, what was the frequency of the stock dropping minus 4.3% or lower historically in our observations? That happened 29.4% of the time. And we took, we converted the average value um, into a price and the average end value would be $5.42, which is down, which data is all here down below in this table. Um, then we look at how many, how frequently did the stock end up um, performance go above 4.8%. That happened 25% of the time, and that end that value was on average 5.87, $5.87. And then we looked at how often did it land right in between um, the minus 4.3% and plus 4.8%, in which case the straddle would have lost would have lost money. That happened 45.6% of the time, and the average value of that would have been a dollar or two in this in this example. So then you take 29.4 times 5.42, 45.6 times a dollar or two, 25 point, 25% times five dollars eighty-seven cents, and the long-term value, the expected value, is three dollars and fifty-three cents. So that's how we get the theoretical value, and here's the um, Historical win rate 29.4 percent, 25 percent. You add the, then you add those up. And that's how you get your theoretical um, uh, frequency of wins. So I'm just going to come back here, and that's that's this data here up front. Another thing you might want to do is say, well, if I'm if I'm approaching it from the buy side, do I see any other potential catalyst moves that could help me out? And here's here's a few filters to help you out. Let's say a company any companies that are reporting events for example within that expiration you could hover over here and you could see like june 25th there's going to be a conference and maybe you know the ceo or somebody might say something that will uh, make that stock move and that june 20 that that june 25th will cover that july 19th expiration so that's a potential catalyst besides the other market economic events that could potentially make that stock move within that time period. So thanks for watching and then we'll do we'll do another one from the sell side.